Kenneth Mas Macho, Franz Klammer, older Tony Seiler. Who's more macho, Franz Klammer or Tony Seiler? They're different generations by about 25 years. Look at this guy. I mean, how do you get more macho than that? Tony Seiler. Skier, water skier, man about town, movie star, beloved local hero of Kitzbühel. He's, he's everywhere. And he's been gone for at least a decade. S-A-I-L-E-R, Tony Sila. And you don't say sailor, of course, you say Sila. Tony Sila. And here is Kitzbühel. This is his town. He's the uh, beloved son of Kitzbühel until someone becomes more famous. But it's hard to become more famous than someone who was here during the heydays, beginning of television and the height of, of movies in the 60s. I mean, that was a really special time, 60s and 70s, for film and international travel. I mean, it was really a time of where every man could start doing the international travel thing. During the World War II generation, not many people left their towns uh, around the world to to travel. You know, people from border countries may have gone across the border, but for the average Joe to have gotten on a plane in the 1940s, it was very rare. They went by ship, but it was still rare, unless it was for business or unless you had a lot of money. So the heydays of international travel, the 60s and 70s for every man, and Tony Seiler was part of that. And it was a lot of fun for a lot of people in the movie business because they weren't followed around by journalists 24 hours a day and they could go out and have a good time and, and not be bugged in, in living their lives even if they were a little bit reckless, you know, like a Hemingway type person or the, the Hollywood partiers, you know, in the Rat Pack. They could, they could go to restaurants and be left alone. This ended during uh, Michael Jackson's time. The end of the 70s, Michael Jackson could go to a restaurant, could go to Studio 54, and on his way in, and while there, be left alone. But later on, starting in the early 1980s, and this was for everyone, but Michael Jackson had that Thriller album, 1982-ish, and that was what propelled him to fame and it was the video age and so people started watching these things and the whole star power really kicked in so that the crazy insane public would not leave people alone so there's tony seiler back in the day having a good time despite antiquated what we call antiquated but in his day it was the best of the best equipment and they did fine. They didn't need high-tech equipment. They thought it was high-tech, but they had the long skis, they skied differently, and it was slower. And I think that was better because they didn't get hurt as much unless there was an avalanche or an unmarked trail or unless they were doing something a little hairy. They didn't get hurt going at the high speeds as frequently as the people today who are going probably 20 to 30% faster in training probably training three times more than the people of Tony Seiler's era and not having as much fun. That's really a thought that I have. The people of today, it's so hard to be at the top of your game. You're training all the time, and if you want to keep up a family and some sanity going, you know, you've got to be going to sleep early. You can't, you can't uh, let down your hair, as they say, and go out and have a good time. You, you can't let down your focus and relax. That's the problem with this high performance, modern world and the elite competition and the elite consumerism. So, Tony Seiler back in the day, the elites now, Tiger Woods' former girlfriend, I can't think of her name right now, but I mean, she has just lived a high performance life and she's torn her legs apart a number of times. I don't see good things for her future. I wish her all the best. But in my opinion, she's not a balanced, well-rounded person, very heart connected. She has an emotional side and heart side true. 
But in my, my opinion, she and many people of this era, the millennials and the people even a little bit before the millennials, she's not a millennial, she's born in 1990s. I don't think they're very heart connected. Maybe she's born in the 19, end of the 1980s, I don't know. But they're not as heart connected and real world connected as the people from prior generations. And I would say my generation in the 60s is still connected. Tony Seiler's even more so than mine, connected to his father and his grandfather. His father started the ski, ski school in this town. He may have been a farmer or owned a small business. And uh, I would guess that Tony's at least father, maybe grandfather or great-grandfather were farmers in this cow region that is Kitzbühel. And here they do things the old-fashioned way, where you, uh, the cows eat the grass, you cut hay and you feed them hay when there is no grass in the winter time, and you feed off of the cows and you ship the cows out to make some money. That's how you should do it. Each person gets to be the master of their domain, so to speak, and it's not this agribusiness where these giant conglomerates where people aren't connected to the business the way they used to be. They're just chattel. The cows are chattel and the people are chattel in the big farming. And, and that really kicked in in Germany and Austria, not much in Austria, but especially in Germany in the 1980s. The small farms went away in the 1980s. In America, it happened uh, starting in the 1920s, much earlier. And, you know, again in the 80s, really big disappearance of farms. I think in the year 2006, I think some 900 farms in California went out of business. And how did that happen? Well, you know, the big lending companies and the big agribusiness and the government, they all got together and they made it impossible for the small people to survive. So it's done from a high level and it's done with backsheesh. It's unfortunate, but on the lighter side, you put on your goggles, you smile. You know, you can see Tony's teeth. They're not perfect teeth back. This is probably 1962, something like that. And that's fine. Who needs perfect teeth? Why would you go in and have your teeth ground down to have implants or caps done on all of your teeth with hazardous chemicals, not just the, the mercury, but the chemicals they use, even the best ones are still toxic in some aspects. Uh, some percentage are still toxic to our systems. So why not just be normal and have teeth that, you know, get used and occasionally get popped when you're skiing? You know, if, they're not, if you're not in pain and if they're still working, keep your teeth. That's, that's my logo. Don't go in. When I looked into it about 2009, to do the entire package with implants was about $50,000. I would imagine it's gone up since then. It's a lot of pain, a lot of sweat, and then you go out and you get into a sport or you fall or you bite something or you do, you know, you just live and those things have problems. So if you're gonna go live in the outback off the grid for a while, you're gonna have a bunch of caps that are su subject to not working. So there's my take on modernism and doing everything manufactured, cosmetically perfect. It, it, those things don't last. The people who do all that work, they know they don't last. They, you know, ask somebody you trust about those, look it up on the internet. Those things don't last. There's too much pressure and you're asking glue uh, and, and some drilling and some pegs to hold all that stuff together. It's not meant to, to hold it together and teeth get a lot of impact and a lot of use. It doesn't work. So you go be all you can be. I'm Sifu Slim, SifuSlim.com. Hoping you enjoy these and please leave your respectful and silly comments down below. I'm not a perfect person. I'm not a perfect person. But I am uh, someone who comes from the heart and I do my best. So there you have it. I'm a hundred percenter, which means you try and you strive to be honest, true, altruistic, and fair in your dealings. You don't always succeed, but you try. That's your goal every day is to be a 100 percenter. See if you can be a hundred percenter. SifuSlim.com. 
Seifer Slim wishing you all the best from Kitzbühel with my man, Tony Sila. There he is. Tschüss.